Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Lord God. The day you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about you. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Lord God, not just understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. The title of today's lesson is, Seek the Lord to Obtain an Everlasting Name. Seek the Lord to <coughs> Obtain an Everlasting Name. And the reason why, like I said, I got that from this lesson dealing with Roman, I mean, Revelation chapter 2 and also Isaiah 56 because God said that when we overcome, he's going to give us an everlasting name and a name that will never be cut off. Because, you know, our names right now, you know, my name, Wells, like I said, that's not going to be our name in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So, but in order to get that everlasting name, we have to strive to make it into the kingdom in order to even get it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start this lesson off in 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to read 10 through 17. Because this is when Paul was talking to Timothy, letting him know that Timothy was raised in the scriptures and that and that, that was able and that was wise enough to where he was able to obtain salvation along with his faith in Jesus Christ. So we're going to read that. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read verses 10 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17. When we get there, go ahead. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, the manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, mm -hmm. at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Mm -hmm. Yea, and all that will God live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen, because that's one thing about it, because you know you got to say, yeah, you know, when you come into the Lord, you know, you're going to be blessed uh, highly favored, he's gonna hit, give you all the money. Oh, no, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Because you, yeah, you're definitely gonna go through uh, suffer persecution when you're when you're um, living for Christ. But go ahead, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Right. So that's right now. So and we're definitely in these last days right now that these evil men and seducers they are growing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're going around telling people you don't have to keep the commandments of God. All you gotta do is just believe. You know, the laws done away with all these different things. You know, it's like that, but that's what I said. But they're, they're being deceived, and they're deceiving people as well. Go ahead, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, mm -hmm. knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, mm. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through mm. faith, which is in Jesus Christ. See, so he said, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. And what were these Holy Scriptures he's talking about? He's talking about from Genesis to Malachi because at this time the New Testament wasn't even around then. So he's telling from so from Genesis to Malachi, he said, which were able to make thee wise unto salvation. So with the knowledge that you had dealing with the Old Testament, that was able to, to, to gain salvation with faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Go ahead. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for mm -hmm. correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen, amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy 4, because he, he says our wisdom, because remember he said right here, he said in um, verse 15, he says, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. We're going to show how these law and commandments is, is what our wisdom is right here. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to read 1 through 13. <coughs> Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 13. Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 13. Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 13. When you get there, go ahead. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them ye may live and to Go and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Mm -hmm. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. See, so it says, you shall not add unto the word which I command you. Because I think he says it, I think he says it in, um, I think it's Proverbs 30 as well. But he says he calls you a liar. A person's a liar if they're doing that. Proverbs 30. I think it's 5 and 6. Proverbs 35 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And he says, Add thou not unto his word, 
lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And see, people are not only just adding to the word, but they're also taking away from the word because they're saying that, you know, we don't have to keep the Sabbath under the new covenant now. You can't read that anywhere in the Bible or the dietary law, the feast days. You can't add nor take away. And this is what God is telling you. That, and he said, if you do, you're found a liar. And that's what a lot of people are doing right now. But go ahead. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. Mm -hmm. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Mm -hmm. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So you see that? So he says, verse 6, So keep, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Because they'll understand, wow, like these people out here, they're not lying on people. They're not coveting after people. They're not uh, uh, commit, uh, commit a fornication people, people, wives, they're doing things that is right, you know what I'm saying, but instead what do we end up doing, we were doing the opposite and then we were going after serving their gods, so it's like wow, so it's like how is it that we're supposed to be, remember God chose us to be the nation to teach all the world about our God, that's what we're supposed to do but yet we want to start following their gods but go ahead for what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? Wow. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him yes. for. Mm. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? See, but they want to tell you, some people want to tell you that that law is bondage Ooh. and it's a curse. All this thing about the, no, the law of sin and death is the violation of the penalty of the law. Yeah, but not the law itself. What's so hard when it says, Thou shalt not steal? Wouldn't you want that? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not give adultery. Wouldn't you want that? Knowing that you living next to your neighbor, you will, don't have to worry about him trying to creep through your back door and trying to get with your spouse. Yeah, like, it, your it's not, yeah, it's nothing. Or you can keep your door open, right? Not knowing that your neighbor will not go in there and try to steal your TV <coughs> or anything that's in your house, right? It's nothing wrong. Those are righteous laws. Exactly. But they want to tell you, ah, oh, that's bondage, bro. You putting yourself up under the command. No, I just want to be obedient because I love them. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Which I said before you this day. Mm hmm. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul uh, diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, mm -hmm. that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Mm. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of, the, of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. Right, so you saw, no, that means a form. We saw no form of him because, you know, God didn't want us to try to make up a, a graven image of him. That's why he said don't do that. So he just let us hear his voice, but we didn't get to see him. And what is the covenant? Verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Hey, Amen. So that's the covenant. That's why, like I said, that's why it's imperative when you're teaching the word of God to somebody. The same way when you read in Acts 15 when um, when those Gentiles were newly converts. When they were newly converts coming from their God, I mean from from, uh, from their idol gods coming into the faith. He said, verse Acts 15, 19, he said, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles turn to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. That's one. And from fornication. Two. From things strangled. Three. And from blood. Four. That's four commandments. And then 21, from Moses of old time hath in every city that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. So like now we got a lot of believers who've been in the church, like they're not coming from uh, 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 idolatry. Like they've been in the church all night. That's why it's imperative, I believe, to establish the Ten Commandments with them. You know what I'm saying? So we, because that's something like we've all read that I've heard about it. So we still want to quote with that. There you go. Right. So when you can establish the Ten Commandments, then you can start dealing with homosexuality, bestiality, all the other stuff. But establish these ten first. And when you can get that, especially the one that says, remember the fourth one, 
And when you start getting those down, and then it'll be much easier to start learning the rest of the commandments because you'll realize, okay, that does make sense because God don't want me doing this. I know I shouldn't be doing this and that. And you'll be able to read them out through the law. Exactly, yeah. But like I said, that's why I like to establish the 10 first before it's trying to, before it's trying to, try to go into the dietary law and everything else. Because the 10 is like the foundation. There you go. It's a covenant. You build, you there you, the amen. There you go. Exactly. That's why I try to tell my Israelite brothers now. Y'all trying to, like I said, now I was like that before trying to give them everything at one time. Like, nah, just establish the 10. Because 9 out of the 10, most people are going to go along with. They know not to lie, steal, covet, commit adultery, things like that. But it's just that fourth one. So when you establish that one, along with the rest of the ten, saying that was the covenant, and he wrote it with his own finger, what makes you think he would do away with it now? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, so that's why I like to do it because when you read the commandments in Acts 15, he only gave them four commandments, but we see lying wasn't mentioned, stealing wasn't mentioned, killing wasn't mentioned, this on your mother, those things weren't mentioned, but we know that those things have to be done, but they just didn't learn them right then and there. They were going to learn those commandments on the Sabbath day. Exactly. So now let's go and go to Deuteronomy 30. Deuter no. No, Deuteronomy, huh? Oh, we're finished, right? Yeah, Deuteronomy um, 10, 12 through, 12 through 22. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 22. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 22. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 22. When we get there, go ahead. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee mm -hmm. but to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Mm. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God. See, that's the third heaven. You know, like, come on, watch, shut up with all that there. See, like I said, so right here, so it says, behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens. That's the third heavens. That's where the Lord resides at. But you know, and that was, I think, the, the second Ezra, well, it talked about it's seven heavens. They, they, they mentioned it's seven. Yeah, it's an apocrypha. Nah, but it's, it's three heavens. Yeah, it's three heavens, not seven. But go ahead. The earth also, with all that therein is, only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this, <coughs> this day. Mm -hmm. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. See, God always wanted our heart to be circumcised first. You know what I'm saying? Because, right, because you could be circumcised in the foreskin of your flesh all you want, but if you ain't being obedient, you're going to still get thrown in the fire. Mm -hmm. But if your heart is circumcised, therefore, he says, and be no more stiff-necked. That means be no more disobedient to me. Because when your heart is circumcised, you can do whatever the Lord wants you to do or tells you to do. Go ahead. And that means to keep his commandments. That's why he said in verse 12, And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways, not some, all his ways, and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Go ahead, verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods mm -hmm. and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible God, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, mm -hmm. and loveth the stranger. And giving him food and rain. He loves the stranger because you know they're trying to tell you know they. they <laughs> he loves the stranger. Why? Yeah, he gonna love the stranger, especially that's, if that stranger is being obedient to his commandments. Because he says if it's one law, one law to the children of Israel, and then and one law to the stranger that's, that's, that's sojourn among you or homeborn among you. Exactly. Go ahead. Love ye therefore the stranger, mm -hmm. for we, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him that him shall thou serve, and to him shall thou plead, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God. That has he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things, which thine eyes have seen. Mm -hmm. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven. Multitude. Praise God. Praise God. So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. We're going to read 10 through 20. Deuteronomy 30. 10 through 20. Deuteronomy 30. 10 through 20. 
Deuteronomy 30, 10 through 20. When you get there, go ahead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, mm -hmm. for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, mm -hmm. neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Mm -hmm. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Mm. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Right, right here. Like I said, that's why in verse 10 where it says, And if thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and the statutes which are written in this book of the law, right then and there. So they have that, they understand it. So it ain't hard to get. You ain't got to go to heaven to get it. You ain't got to go to the bottom of the sea to get it. It is right here. It's nigh unto us. So you can't say, well, Lord, it was just too hard because I didn't know well, what I had to do. No, it's right here. You know what I'm saying? So there's no excuse. Verse uh, 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, mm -hmm. and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply. Mm -hmm. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it, but if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, mm -hmm. I denounce unto you this day mm. that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I call heaven and earth to record this day <coughs> against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, mm. that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, mm. and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Amen, amen. So he said, but thou, he says, so, so when he told him right here, in verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life. And how you choose life, you choose life by being obedient to God. But we got to also understand this life is much more than just a regular life. This is also dealing with eternal life as well because, what is he saying in um, Psalms 95? In Psalms 95... I'm sorry, verse 7, he says, For he is our guard, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. That means in the day in the, in the rebellion, when it was in the wilderness. As in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. When your father t uh, tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long I was grieved with the generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not they have not known my ways unto he said, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Remember, this when you tie this in with Hebrews chapter 4, that rest was also dealing with the rest when Christ comes. So we, there you go. Amen. Exactly. So we understand that uh, um, Joshua and Caleb, they'll be there, you know what I'm saying, because they were still, and I'm pretty sure probably some of the ones that were, you know, that were 20 and, and under at this time, and if they were in the land being obedient, they'll, they'll, they'll also be in that rest as well, though. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but that's what he was talking about. That's, that was the life letting you know that you can live here on this life, but also it's something afterwards to look for. That's eternal life. Exactly. Let's go now to uh, Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. 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 When you get there, go ahead. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live and my laws as, a as the apple of thine eye. So when something is the apple of your eye, that means that you cherish it. And God, and God gave two things that was the apple of his eye. He said Israel was the apple of his eye. And he said the law 
is the apple of his eye. And what does he want us to do with that? Verse 3. Bind them upon thy fingers. Yes. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Right. See, God always wanted our laws, his laws to be written upon our heart. Because when they're written upon your heart, then that means that you're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But instead of just not being just a hearer of the word, but also being a doer of the word. Exactly. So it's moving when David said, he said Lord, uh, uh, I've hidden thy word in my heart. Yes. I, my there you go. Amen. There you go. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 24. 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 Can you get there? Go ahead. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, mm -hmm. which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye may do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, mm -hmm. that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life <coughs> mm -hmm. that thy days might may be prolonged mm -hmm. hear therefore O Israel mm -hmm. and observe to do it that it may be well with thee that and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey mm -hmm. O Israel hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God mm -hmm. with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Mm -hmm. Remember, he, Jesus quoted this in Matthew 22 when they asked him. Um, in Matthew 22, when they tried to tempt, when they tried to tempt Jesus and ask him which was the greatest commandment of all. So, yeah, it was. Um, Right here, uh, Matthew 22 and 34 says, But when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. We just read that, Deuteronomy 6, 5. And then he quotes, he said, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when, see, see, when people say that, see, brother, all we got to do is just love each other. We ain't got to keep the commandments like that. Jesus said all we got to do is love. First of all, we got to understand what was the context of what he was They were trying to tempt him. It's like saying, which is greater? Is it greater for me not to lie? Or is it greater for me to not worship false gods? Is it greater for me not to covet? Or is it greater for me not to, uh, or to honor my father, mother and father? He said, oh, okay, all right. So when he quoted, when you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, even in the Ten Commandments, right, the, ten, the first four are dealing with him, and the last six are dealing with your neighbor. Amen. So you can even look at it like that to where it's like, look, so anything God says, you're going to do what God says, and anything that's pertaining to your neighbor, then you're going to do it because it's all going to be written in the law, but he would just let, let, let them know when you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength as well as your neighbor, these two hang all the law and the prophets. That didn't, that didn't do away with the law. He was just telling you, letting you know all these things. Will, these two commandments sum up everything that's inside the law. That's all that was. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Um, verse six. 7. 7? Yes. Okay, you can read 6 again. Go ahead. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, mm -hmm. and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when... Thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, mm -hmm. and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, mm -hmm. and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house mm -hmm. and on thy gates, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give <coughs> great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, mm -hmm. and the house full of all, the house is full of all good things, mm -hmm. which thou fillest not, and wells dig, and which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, mm -hmm. 
So they had all that in the land of Canaan flowing of milk and honey. We still transgressed our God. Mm -hmm. All of this he gave us. And other nations observed it and was envious. And, 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 and mm. many people were saying that, man, if we, man, your God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were amazed and stuff. They were heathen nations and stuff. There you go. They were, they were, they were uh, worshiping all kind of false gods. But even though that <coughs> God was invisible, they couldn't see it. See him, but they would they recognize this stuff. This is of a truth. Mm -hmm. Your God fights for you. Yeah. Y'all got houses that you didn't even have to build and stuff because the uh, the, uh, the Canaanites, those they, they came in and took their their, their lands and their vineyards and everything by by God's permission. You pray, there you go. Amen. Amen. There yeah, you go. That, Amen. But then like, that's crazy, like you said. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. They turn away from exactly, yeah. yeah. We want a king now. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 he said, I was their king. You know, he was over us. Like, just imagine you having God in your presence fighting all your battles, but yet you want to have a king. Can you imagine those Samites saying, well, hey, you know what? You can have our king. Can we have yours? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Seriously. You know, they were like, maybe, no, this joke ain't doing like today, like in today's society, our people are still trying to hold the way they Mm, right. So, on the other hand, we flip and want to know, gosh, why do we have to suffer so much as people? The, the world is still asleep. Mm. They don't know the truth. That's true. That they need to be obeying the commandments. So they said, why are we still so disagreeing? I had someone just today ask me, do you think that we're going to ever get justice? Or we gonna mm. not? And it's like not until Christ. So Ooh, that's preach. Christ. There you go. That, and that's, there you go. It's written. Yeah. It's written. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You see, we are the, you know, as a people, as a culture, so wayward, we go against everything mm. that God says. Wow. We don't understand the big God that we serve, mm -hmm. that we want to just do what everybody else is doing, or we don't want to be set aside, we don't want to come out and be consecrated and do what God sure. asks us to do. So we end up suffering because God already had told us, you know, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. but it was that Deuteronomy where he said, if you don't, you're going to go to a land. Oh, yeah, you do the right 28. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and mm -hmm. so we still, the, the ancestors still just couldn't. It went on anyway. There you go. Just, just obeyed, so we were just suffering. Now you go. Now look at us right now in our situation. Yeah. Yes. In the lap of the situations. Parents yes. Parents are teaching their children do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. There's no standard, no law. And this is my, and I'm going to stop. Yeah. But this is my favorite thing. Every structure in this world has a, 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 a law. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. They have a law for corporate America. Yes. They have a law for the school structures. The, uh, a college a thing, everything, every different college, everything, even uh, bylaws of yes. even in your city, city government. There you go. Stuff. But when it comes to God, everybody says, Oh, God, I love you. Love you. <laughs> you can be lawless you know, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can be lawless, do what you want to do, live like you want to, because God loves everybody. Yeah. It'll make him out to be like, God is a lollipop. <laughs> you see what I mean? He's just good. But every other entity rock. has law. Like there you go. Even a board yeah. game, like Monopoly, yeah. that board, they got yeah. rules and regulations you got to go by. Yeah, but, but, but the kingdom, you ain't got to, though. And the way a man's supposed to live according to the scriptures, yes. they don't want laws. Mm. The flesh, like, it's, there you, you know, go. It's enmity yes, it against God. Yes, it's it's right. Right. We don't want it. Yes, but it is. But the whole world, though, they'll tell you, oh, you can't do this. Yes. Do what you want. Yeah. We yeah. talk about it all the time. But they do not want God to be the one that has to be that's it. You go in people's houses and they have they house rules. Some people might judge you right on. Yeah, I want to say that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But with God, they don't want any laws. Why would God tell you to do something? He said, He's a loving God. Yeah. You know, that's what you do. Don't be done that much. And then you think about it. Why would God tell you to do something? 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 Thinking they can be all kind of kids you know, going and shooting yeah. up the schools and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 They can do what they want to my mom said, and they sit here doing whatever they want. The parents are the parents coming to the school to back them up. They, oh, oh, yeah, they will. <laughs> That's sad, boy. Right. They're coming back up. The society that we live in, anything goes on television and stuff like that. Yeah. These kids are Oh, they're they seeing all of that. They don't even know. They Tell don't even really know about who they really are and stuff. And then they're they, I'm gay. Yep. Or yeah. I'm gay. And you're saying that you're saying that you know, that's, that's maybe a hypocrite. And then you got these parents that are sitting up there, you know, I'm giving, what was that thing you were saying about that doctor when, when the woman was saying when their child would be born that they wanted, uh, the child was going to be 
something, the term that you use. Oh, what is it called? Where they, 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 they Pansexual or something? Some where he didn't have to change. Oh, oh, oh yeah. gender neutral. Gender neutral. Gender neutral. That's the thing now. Yeah. What? That's the thing now. Yeah, that's the thing. A thing now. What you mean? Gender neutral, like. Whoa, 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 whoa. They choose, they choose it later. Hold up. Hold up. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. The e? Do you remember that? Do y'all remember that show back in the day? Uh, well, it's still on now. Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. Remember that thing called Pat? Remember oh, yeah. Pat? Sure. What? I remember that Pat. Yeah. You didn't know if Pat was a boy or a girl. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I Do you remember that? You remember? Okay. Yeah, this is just like back in the 90s, like uh, early 90s. So, like, yeah, I remember Pat. Yeah, Pat. Pat, Pat was, he was like, you didn't know what Pat was, well, you didn't know it was a boy or a girl. So now you're trying to say now when they're born, they don't have to identify with their genitalia if they're saying that. Right, because they're saying that when they grow up, they even though God, intelligent being, give you all, wow. the hormones, all of everything that, you know, there's hormones that distinguish yes. females and females, right. you know, and from that, even if you have that, but if the person's mind tells them that they are. <laughs> their, mind their mind tells, tells them. Mind tells them. That's a good yeah, point with yeah, your mind, too. Yeah, That's yeah, carnal. But yes, sis, God already said this. God made male and female. He made them both. Well, there you God go. God said that you, did, that he, you, you have been already preached to you. Determined. Yes. Right. He said by, by his law, his, by his law mm -hmm. and his organization. Yes. That, his ordinance. Yeah, he yeah, set his, up. Yeah. That's his ordinance. <laughs> yes. You're either male or female. And then they turn the whole thing around in this kind of lifestyle and have the children in school Look at this. Look at this. Romans 1 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them over to vile affection. That means shameful passions. For even, he said, their women did change. The natural use in which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burn in their lust one toward another, mm. men and men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the errors which was meat. Look, and then even as they did not to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Hold on, y'all, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, you go over the reprobate mind to those which are convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Look, here's the key. Who knowing the judgment of God that, he said, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Yes. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So if you even agree with that lifestyle, he said, you're also going to the Father. If you're agreeing, because you got a lot of people yeah. saying they're not gay. Well, I'm not gay, but my friends are gay. And I also go to gay pride parades and stuff like that. But I'm not gay, but I support their cause. That's what I wanted. Well, you go into the fire too. He said, if you condone that lifestyle. This is amazing, Pastor. She called me today. We were talking today. We went over that same chapter, Romans 1. Mm -hmm. Wow. She Chapter 6, verse 12. Then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Then shalt thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. 
he shall not go after other gods of <clears throat> of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. Mm -hmm. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. <clears throat> and when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord, the, which the Lord our God hath commanded you. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, I'm sorry, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in and give us the land which he swear unto our fathers. Mm -hmm. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good ways, and for our good always, <clears throat> that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. <clears throat> As he hath commanded. Amen. So he says right here, verse 25, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Now look, let's go to uh, Luke 1. Luke 1, 5, 6. Because we're going to see John the Baptist's parents. They were considered blameless unto the Lord because they were being obedient, walking in his, in his commandments and statutes. Luke 1, 5, 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking and all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Hey, Amen. So you see that, though. But he said, but they were both righteous before God because God said, this is your righteousness that you do all these commandments that I commanded you this day. So by them being obedient, of course, we're not saying that we know that they, they weren't perfect. They did sin. However, they weren't they weren't walking around being a slave to sin. And when they did sin, you know, you're able to offer up sacrifice to atone for your sins. But God considered them righteous before him because they were being obedient to him. What, what you had read earlier, you see that, that the children of Israel are uh, forefathers and stuff. They didn't do what God had told them and stuff. What you supposed to have been telling your sons and daughters. Yes, my sons and my sons. Like sons. They, they, didn't, they, weren't, they weren't sharing the stuff. They said this. When you would sit down, you would think about a historic situation like that as a grandfather or something. You'd have your grandchildren or your lineage around you and stuff. And throughout the household, mm. telling the stories and stuff mm. about how God. Had yes, to praise and God. Stuff. And it's almost like they just. Yes, just that's how. Yes. Amen. So like it was nothing. Yeah, like it was nothing. That's so true. Yeah, so true. Share that, yeah. yeah, it should have been. That's why he said, yeah, now, and God put it in a book for us for what we should be doing this for our, our, our children, our, our family members like that now. And that's what we're doing now. It don't take all of that. Yeah, it don't. <laughs> all you got to do is love Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> but how do you love him? Jesus said, you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah, well, what commandments are those, though? Jesus didn't. Because they'll say, well, you know, uh, what we do is the law of Christ. We don't do the law of Moses. Well, what's the law of Christ? Uh, well, what's the law of Christ then? then see, that's when, that's when you, know, you catch up. Well, you know, yeah, we don't do that law of Moses, but we do the laws of Christ, though. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like. said that it was once said for you not to hate a person without a cause. But then we, after he come here, he said, it's like, it, it, yeah, you should uh, now love your enemy. Well, yeah, you, yeah your enemy, yes. You mm -hmm. love your enemy. Mm -hmm. But before he said. If you hated your brother, brother by the car, you're considered murder. You, yeah, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now it seems like a love. Yes. And that's hard to love the enemy. Somebody yes, it is. Take you down. Yes, it is. Yeah. But see, Jesus showed that, though, how the Pharisee would treat them in the room. He showed us how to walk that way, though. It's, that's why he's our example to see, okay, well, if Jesus did it like this, well, let me try to walk in his same footsteps and also try to overcome my enemies as well and walk in love with them. Yeah, it's hard, but that's why he is our example to see how he did it so now we can follow after him. And that is so true because, because, you know what, when, in this walk, in this, in this life, if you really get led by the Holy Spirit, because God told me to pray for a man that I knew that was, I remember that. That was my enemy. I remember that, yeah, it's a job, yeah. Said, Lord, God, oh, you, I, I, I was like, that was a hard, that was I remember a hard that. thing. But God, you dealt with There you go, that. praise God. Like you said, like, about how Christ gave that example, he showed that example on the cross. Amen. Ooh. Yeah, I was, I, that's what I, that's what I was going right now. Stephen, I, I was about to read that too, where he said that. Um, where is it at? Yeah, uh, Acts eight fifty nine. It says, and they stoned Stephen, and calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And he, when he had said this, he fell asleep. Exactly, he said the same wow. thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Let's go now to um, Luke 5. Luke 5, 27-32. Luke 5, 27-32. Luke 5, 27-32. Luke 5, 27-32. You get there? Go ahead. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast. Remember, Levi is also, this is Matthew's Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him. Mm-hmm. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, mm-hmm. but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, he said, so, and remember, who were the righteous ones? The righteous <coughs> ones were the ones that were obedient to God's commandments. So, he said, I ain't called. He said, I ain't come to them. Because they're already walking. Remember, we read Zechariah and Elizabeth, how they were already walking in commandments of blameless. He said, I'm calling. He says, I want to tell the, the sinners to repent so that they can also become righteous as well. And that's what he said he was going to do. But that leads, but what did the Bible tell you about your righteousness? It comes to by being obedient to the law. Now, we understand right now under the new covenant, our righteousness doesn't come by the law. You know, because it says in, um, in Romans... Uh, with sin does, it does not mean that we don't have to obey, though, because the Romans 10, 4 says, For Christ is, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes in him. And then when you go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be ri- made the righteousness of God in him. Exactly. So by us being obedient, keeping his commandments, now God sees us by us doing that. But he sees the blood of Jesus on us now. So that's why our righteousness comes through him, not by through the law, but it'll be through Jesus. But yet we're still having to be obedient and keep the law Amen. so that our faith in him, he sees that. Okay, he sees that we're righteous because we're believing on him. And we're keeping his commandments. So that's why I say, because if you just want to keep the law without believing on him, you ain't going to have no righteousness because you've already sinned. And now you need atonement for your sin. If you don't have Jesus, how are you going to be atoned for your sin? See, that's exactly. why like a lot of Pharisees and people who are not uh, of, of, of Messianic yes. Jews, that, those are there you go. That, that land. If they don't, they, a lot of them, they feel as though that by them keep trying to keep the law. Because see, what they're actually saying is stuff, because I've heard people say, well, you know, I now, I haven't accepted Christ as my Lord mm-hmm. and Savior, but I think that I'm relatively a pretty nice person. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You hear people talk like that, and they're really in their mindset think that I think that I'm going to be good enough and stuff with the creator. Like God said, if, if, that's 
Yes. And that's what they feel. Literally just, and we all need to tell them. <laughs> Believe me. Yes, we do. Yes, amen. Praise God. That's what it is, knowing that you need a Savior. There you go. There you go. Right. Amen. We're not high-minded thinking that this law will save us without Jesus. Exactly. Amen. Luke 14, 15 through 24. 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 Go ahead. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Mm. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. See, so what So what he was letting them know, like, this is dealing with the children of Israel. Like, he was trying to let the children of Israel, look, I'm coming to you guys. Now, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand to come. So when he went out and tried to bid the Israelites to come, they didn't want to come. They're like, they're, they're, they were busy. They were busy. He's like, oh, okay, so watch what he's going to say then. Keep going. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast. Yes. For I say unto you that none of those men which are bidden shall taste of my supper. All right. So the ones that he invited, the ones who felt they couldn't come, they're not going to get into the kingdom because I've already presented this to you, but yet you felt that some things were more important than you to get into the kingdom. So he said, okay. So now the other ones who didn't know about the kingdom, he went out. That's why I was being disciples because now we're teaching the gospel to all nations. They're going to hear it and they're going to come to the kingdom. But the children of Israel, as a matter of fact, he even gives another. Um, I think it was Matthew 8, Matthew 8 and 10, where he says, I'll start at verse 10, Matthew 8 and verse 10, where he says, he says, it was dealing with the centurion, a, a Gentile. He says, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed. He said, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, which were the Israelites, shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He says, here I am. They go into the fire. They go into the fire. Here is this Gentile who has faith and believes. There's going to be some other Gentile that's going to take y'all seat because you guys rejected me and didn't have faith in me. And that's what he was showing right then and there. That's exactly. I said. I came to my own. In the home. Seat. There you go. But Amen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Where are we at? Okay, that was it. Okay, that was it. Yeah, okay. So now let's go and go to uh, Luke 15. Luke 15, we're going to read 8 through 10. Luke 15, 8 through 10. Luke 15, 8 through 10. Go ahead. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and mm -hmm. sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? Right. <laughs> And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I had lost. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Oh, Praise God. Yeah. He loves that. Yeah. He loves that when we turn. Yeah. Yes, he loves that. And that's how we plead. Brother, I don't know why you're trying to put yourself up under that law. Why are you trying to repent for <laughs> <laughs> why, you, why are you trying to keep the law and Jesus died for nah, you Because repent means to turn from your sinful nature to start following God. So that's why I'm saying it's crazy because some, some people will tell you to repent, but they repent from what though? If, if you're saying the law is done away with or nailed to the cross. So, we, so what are you repenting from? 
You know what I'm saying? That's exactly. Why, that's why. the standard of sin is transgression. There, praise law. God. Amen. So law, uh, uh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. But praise that's God. just like as a believer, when you see somebody who has been on the wrong path and been living a, a, a rebellious life, I, I remember growing up and stuff, it was a young man that I knew and stuff, he died young, but I saw that transformation of what Jesus Christ saved him and stuff. Praise God. And he was just a beautiful soul, he said, because I called him by his own nickname and stuff, and he told me, don't, don't call me a little one. Don't call me that man. He said, that, that was Got you, CSD. Man, you know, He's a new creature in Christ now. Me. Praise God. And I said, praise God. I said, I said, Amen. I said, I'm sorry about that, brother, and stuff. And he said, he said, oh, no, no problem. He said, but he said, I have to tell a lot of people and stuff. He said, I'm not that same. Yes, mm -hmm. praise said, God. Up that old praise God. Amen, that old man. Yeah. And it was beautiful. There you go. It was beautiful. Amen. Some people are like hot and cold. So y'all come to the Lord, but y'all still do this. That's good. Ooh. Thing. You know what and God's going to spew you out. There you go. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. I, heard, I was an old preacher on the job. I used to work at and stuff. That's why he, his witness did wasn't about nothing because he used to be there. He wanted to go for halfway back. He was talking about, I'll knock you out. You know, I'll pray about you later. <gasps> oh, hateful act to do. Yeah. That's why dudes used to be saying, man, I didn't make that in church. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe saying, man, I never go to that in this church. Yeah. He was a pastor. He was a pastor. And look what the Bible says about that. Um, about those, First Timothy chapter 2, no, verse Timothy 3, where it talks about a bishop, but also a man of God. And he says, a bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Verse? Oh, oh, 1 Timothy 3. Okay, yeah. start the first verse. Uh, yeah, we can start the first verse. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. If a bishop then be, must be blameless, the husband of one wife, diligent, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy looker, be patient, not a brawler, <laughs> not a brawler, nor covetous, and one that rules well his own house, having children in subjection with all gravity. So he's letting you know. So, yeah, so if you can't be a man of God saying that you quick to try to fight somebody, you know what I'm saying? You can't be doing that, you know what I'm saying? Because our master, he was, now, granted, you know, someone tries to, you know, run up and try to right. do self defense. That's not, that's not a problem. You don't be running up, someone disagree with you, like, he just really wants to, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go across your face, I'll beat you down, like, dang. Like, just because we disagree, you want to fight me now? Like, we're not supposed to, we're, that's not the kind of heart we're supposed to have. See, that's not the right, that's not the right kind of uh, a spirit to have and stuff when people will come to a pastor who are so-called pastor and have questions. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to talk about, look here, uh, don't, don't come to me with that, that, that kind of stuff like that or either. Yeah, I'm trying to know, question God because last, last time, they don't even yeah. answer anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. You, just, you, just do, you just do what I say. Yeah. <laughs> but see, they, those those type of pastors that don't want people to stuff to be like the Marines. Mm. Praise, Praise God. God. There's a time and season for everything. Yes. There come a time where you have to, I know my mom, she used to tell us growing up, don't you ever start in trouble, don't you ever get mm -hmm. into, you know, fight. I'm doing things she said, but you don't have to stand up if it comes to you. Yes, and yes. She said, when you do what's right, then you have to fight. She said, I believe that the Lord will give you the mm -hmm. spirit to take him on out. Mm -hmm. Because if you are doing everything you yeah, can, there you go. It, there you go. Thank you. There you go. You know, Yes, you, you do. The Bible says it's time for war. It's time for peace. Praise God. Praise God. God. It's yes. It says, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication that is not so much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not mourned that he had done this deed might be taken away from among you. 
For verily, as absent in the body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning them, concerning him which had done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye have gathered together in my spirit in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your glory is not good. Know that a little leaven can leaven the whole lump, right. saying that you're allowing this to go on in this church, and if people <coughs> see this, that's why right now you have in these churches now, you can have the head person of the choir could be homosexual now. Compromise. In, compromise because, you know, but he's saying in the church like this now, especially like he said, they're, they're not even supposed to be doing it. And this is what he says right here. He says this um, in verse 9, I wrote unto you an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. Right. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covenants or extortioners or with idolaters. He said, we already know that. He said, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man be called a brother. So if any man is considered a brother or sister in Christ, be a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater or a relative or a drunkard or extortioner with such as one not to eat. For he said, for what? I have to do to judge them that are without. Do not judge them that are within, but them that are without God's judges. Therefore, put away from among you yourselves that wicked person. Wow. See, <laughs> so that's what that's first. Oh, that first, first, um, first uh, Corinthians five one through one through twelve. No, one through thirteen. One through thirteen. I'm going to keep that and read it because I have a sister in Christ that I know that there's, you know, there's someone among us that you know living with. Partner gotcha. And okay. I got you. They love God too. I got you. And then they're telling lies and they getting caught in this and getting that. And when God tells you to separate, and you, He says, "Okay, just separate, not to hurt that person, yeah, uh -huh. but just to move on." Because God is telling you, I, you know, I'm the one that prays. Said, Lord, this person, how do you break it? He'll set it up and let you know. God just did a whole took the sheet off of the person mm. and showed what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Not that he, that person that I'm saying is bad or that uh -uh. you don't love them. It's just that. And considered that's to be a brother to our sister, our brother sister in Christ. Yes. That's not not uh, not loving them. You're being obedient to what God's word tells you. There you go. You. I'm not going to hurt the sister if they need help out there. Yes. I have to, when God says separate, yes. separate. Don't you tell you to come back from my mom? Yes, you did. Yes, yeah. People, but they get mixed up. That God, you just got to love everybody <laughs> and everything they do. And God's love cover a multitude of sin, and it does. Yes. It covers all of us, but that person, when they are walking right then, there you to go. where he has me Amen. in the present time of my life. So mm -hmm. when you tell you to separate, you've got to separate. Amen. There's nothing against them to judge or yes. say that they're not doing something right. But when God said, come out from among that, they mean that. Mm -hmm. They don't say. Amen. Amen. Where are we at? Luke um, 14? Or, no, no, we're 13? No, where are we at? Oh, yeah, Luke 13. Yeah, Luke 13, 18 through 30. Luke 13, 18 through 30. Luke 13. 18 through 30. Luke 13, 18 through 30. Go ahead. Then said he, Unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden, and it grew, and waxed a great tree. And the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leaven. Right. So just let you know. So like we see, like the mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds, but when it branches out, birds have to sit on the same way with the um, with the leaven. It just took three measures, but then still made a whole a whole cake with it. So Jesus was saying, remember, Jesus said, "Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is hand." So when he came, he started it then. So it started off small. But when as he comes and gets to the future, now it's going to grow out and be wise where the whole world's going to be in a, having to follow this law. Because he says that in Isaiah 11, Isaiah 11, I think it's 11 and um, I think it's 10. Let me see, Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah 11. No, I, I read, I read verse 9, Isaiah 11, 9 and 10. It says, for they shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. 
At this time, that's when the kingdom of God, but when he came, it just started out real small. Middle school, now it's growing, growing, and it's growing now. It's like I said, it's growing now, but it's really going to reach its full pinnacle when he comes into his kingdom. So that's what he was like into the kingdom. But when he was telling the Pharisees that because the Pharisees were under the, they were ostracized by the Romans, so they wanted that kingdom then and there because they were under captivity of the Romans. But Christ let them know, listen, they got to start off small first before it gets to that level to where Israel will get back into the rightful status. So he was letting them know, this has to happen first. I have to come, die for the sins of the world, and then when I do return, this is when the kingdom of God will go out through all out the world. But until then, it's going to start off small. It's going to grow now. But see, they wanted it right then and there because you know because they're you know because we've always been in captivity. It seemed like you know so that's like like some of these camps out there right now and stuff. Yeah, that, that's out there and stuff. They 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 dealing with hatred and stuff. And it seemed like with the Pharisees and stuff. It's just like with uh, what you said that it came from uh, the book of of, of Tarahus. That was never God's word, but it was. They're talking about you know it was a lawful. Oh yeah, tell me. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't lawful for them to to the pick the pluck. To, to, uh, the pluck oh yeah, the, the, the Gentiles. To the Gentiles. Yes, yes, yes. Acts ten twenty six. They didn't understand what God was saying. So God was saying that, that this was going to spread worldwide because that's that goes to tell you where God said that He's a just God. Mm -hmm. No man will have no excuse. Amen. They won't. They won't have no excuse. Mm -hmm. Where are we at? Uh, fifteen. Okay, go ahead. And he went into he went through the cities 13. and the villages. And journeying toward Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Mm. And he said unto them, Try to enter in at the straight gate. The narrow gate. Mm -hmm. For many, I say unto you, will seek oh, to enter in, and shall not be able. Mm. When once the master of the house is risen up, and have shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not when ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, mm. and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. So you see that verse 20 and 27 <laughs> says, Then ye shall begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in your presence, and thou hast taught us in our streets. Yes, they were hearers of the word, but they were not doers of the word. That's why he said, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not which you are. Depart from me, all workers of iniquity. Because, yeah, when I was in your prayer, yeah, like I said, yeah, you heard my words, but then, yeah, you didn't go out and do them. And that's why, that's why he was mad. You know, so that's why, that's why they're, that's why they're considered workers of iniquity, because they heard it, but didn't do it. 28, go ahead. There shall be weeping and national uh -huh. when ye shall see. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, mm. and you yourselves thrust out. Wow. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. And it talks about that, and that's dealing with the people who are out there who have, who have all this prestige and stuff like that in this lifetime. So now, the ones out there in this lifetime who had all this they're going to be lower, and then the ones out there who didn't really have anything, now they're going to be risen up and, and glory because because remember he said those who those who humble themselves, God's going to exalt them, and that's what's happening. God and God exalted them at that time. Go ahead. Okay, so when he said, "Depart from me, workers of iniquity," um, was it like um, um, workers of sin? Or yes, yeah, iniquity um, means sin exactly. When he said workers of iniquity. I don't get it because um, so what they did not. Right, a worker of iniquity is one who's a slave to sin, where they're constantly sinning and don't have a repentful heart. Because, like, say, you know, we do something wrong. Yes, you know, we commit sin, but the Bible says a good man falls seven times, but get back up. But when the wicked fall, they fall into all mischief, all types of evil. So when we're walking this walk, are we going to sin? Yes, but we have a Jesus Christ as our advocate of the Father, where it's, he's able to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. However, a person who is a worker of iniquity is not even trying to. Is not even trying to repent, and but they'll still have a form of godliness, though. Because they're like, Lord, Lord, did we perform miracles in your name, cast out devils in your name, and do all these things, depart from your workers of iniquity? He said the same thing in Matthew, 20, Matthew 7, 21 to 24. So these are the ones out there that also got a form of so-called godliness, but yet they're not doing the works of the Lord. They're just pretending. They have all the cliches, right. but not living it, not That's living it. That's what the word of God says. That's what the word of God says. Yeah. The ones that says, Lord, Lord. Yes, there you go. They're crying. You got, man, you see, you, you see, you see, you see these gangsters and thugs that the media talk about, you know, they call it over. It's more, it's more. That's it.
that's all. Yeah. <laughs> It just means that it would just give an example, you know, like that. Because, like, when a person asks, he said, How many times should I forgive my brother? He says, 70 times 7. 70 times 7. That's 490. He's not giving it saying after the 491 forgiveness. No. He was, all he was just saying is that you always. Huh? huh? He says a lot of yeah, he says there to forgive because God has forgiven us of all of our sins. So we have to also forgive our brethren of their sin because we've sinned many, many times, you know what I'm saying, in our life. So he, if he's forgiving us, we, got, we also got to forgive our brother right. and sisters. A sinner is a person that. Not trying to get there you up. go. That's They're it. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's no. true. That's yeah. a lifestyle. That's, that's a lifestyle. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's a lifestyle, exactly. Let's go to Matthew 19, 16 through 30. Matthew 19, 16 through 30. Go ahead. Matthew 19, 16 through 30. Matthew 19, 16 through 30. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. See, so he says, So if you want to enter into everlasting life, keep the commandment. That's out of the mouth of Jesus. Now look what he's going to say. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear, <coughs> bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. Up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. See, the thing about it is, First Timothy chapter six verse ten says, "For the love of money is the root of all evil. While even some covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows." So even though this person he said he he kept those commandments, but he still loved money more than anything. So that's why he said, "I've done these things to you, but yet." He couldn't give up his riches because he loved his riches more than he loved God. But go ahead, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can who then can be saved? No, now remember you said dealing with the rich man now because also it says this in 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who give us richly all things to enjoy that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Because you got some folks say, yeah, you know, if you're rich, man, you can't, you can't get in the kingdom. No, that's not true. Because you got some people who are rich who still love the Lord and help out those that are in need, but still they can enjoy the love because they don't put their faith and trust in those riches. Even though God is blessing with the riches, they're still doing well with those riches and expanding the kingdom of God and being a vessel to be used to help people in need. So this is what, like I said, that was just bringing clarification to that because that's why they said in verse 25, when the disciples heard it, they were extremely amazed. They're exceedingly amazed. Like, what? So a person rich can't get in the kingdom? No, they can, but as long as they continue to put their faith in God and not trust in those uncertain riches. And that's what he did. He trusted in those riches more than he did with God. But go, go ahead. Uh, Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, uh -huh, that's 8, 9, 6. That yeah. they have stolen from those that are in the country because the money is the God. You can see in the political mm -hmm. arena today, oh, yeah. it's all about the money. 
money yes, and is. power. Yes, it is. And so it's a lot of people out here just they love that money mm -hmm. more. And that's what I said. Mammon is a big thing because yes. many people go to the church mm. to get money or to be a pastor to become, you know, get, mm. they look at that and they say, well, oh. this way <laughs> yes, a hustle. to become wealthy in America from one of the new jobs is to become a pastor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's sad yeah. too. So yeah. It's yeah. Right. You know, the thing about um, the rich despise the poor. I yes. Know, right. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. And then the rest are like market rate, regular, um, uh, play the regular price. Mm -hmm. And they got this really nice pool. They got like a tennis court, like all these different amenities. So the people that are on the affordable apartments, mm -hmm. they can't access any of that. Mm -hmm. But they're still paying for it. Wow. They can't see, get that's not access to the pool. Like they're like, no, they can't have a back entrance for the affordable tennis. They have mm -hmm. to like, it's like, Yeah, class, that's exactly what that it is. is. God says don't be no respect to a person. Exactly. That's being a respect to a person right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You see that in the churches too because I think you were talking one time that some some mega church, whatever, if you're a person of status, you get to sit in the front. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was at a... a that's a black people's church. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We even mentioned the thing, but yeah, but, yeah, but the pastor, yeah, yeah. Because he sat there. He said, they said, well, how much you, well, no, well, no, this right here is for the ones who give this. So they told the, the pastor to go to sit somewhere else because he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't he giving as many members. Wow. Yeah, he didn't have as many members. Yeah. He said, that's, And that's one. what Jesus told him to say. You don't tell the, 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 the goodly man that he got the ring in his, uh, on, uh, on his ear or something like that. Tell him, you come and sit mm -hmm. uh, up front and tell him, right. you, you, you said that right. Jesus talked about that. He said, that's, the, the, that's what you're showing respect to person. Yeah, that's Deuteronomy 117. Yeah, Deuteronomy 117 is that commandment. Where we at? Verse 26. Go ahead. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mm. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Mm. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Oh, the resurrection, same thing. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And every one that hath forsaken houses of brethren or sisters, or father or mother or wife, or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Mm. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Amen. Um, let me ask you a question. Didn't, um, when um, Jesus said with men, this is impossible with God, all things impossible, didn't Mary say that? Well, yeah, no, the, uh, yeah, um, the God, yeah, in Luke 1, yeah, that was dealing with because of the virgin birth, right? right. So, mm -hmm. so in Luke 1, in Luke 1, verse 34, it says, Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I not know a man? And the angel answered, said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest <coughs> shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He said, And behold, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month of, with her, who was called barren, for with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Exactly. So, because Mary's trying to say, like, how am I going to have a child when, you know, I haven't even known a man, and here it is, Elizabeth, in her old age, she was able to conceive John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, okay, so now we're going to go to um, Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Revelation 2. 25 to 29. Revelation 2. 25 through 29. Revelation 2, 25 through 29. Revelation 2, 25 through 29. Go ahead. Revelation 2, 25 through 29. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. So he's telling you, so what you already had, the knowledge and doctrine that I've taught you, Hold that until I come. Because what? 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works 
and to the end. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, mm -hmm. even as I received of my father, mm -hmm. and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear mm -hmm. what the Spirit saith unto the church. Amen. Amen. So he says, so we <coughs> overcome. So that's why he says, he says, now we're going to read the same thing about uh, hold fast with what you have. We go to the next chapter over. Revelation 9, uh, Revelation 3, 9 through 13. Revelation 3, 9 through 13. The little ones is to um, endure to the end. So, um, and then going back to the last thing we um, read, um, if you don't, then he's going to say, depart from me, one girl, and then Amen. Amen. Exactly. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3. 9 through 13. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them a synagogue of Satan, which say that which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. I just had to put that in there. You know what I'm saying? But let's go to, let's go to verse 10. <laughs> go, yes, you know, Mike, so go ahead, though. But what? You said, but thou hast what? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Yes. I also will keep from the hour of temptation, mm -hmm. which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that's a great tribulation right there. But go ahead. Behold, I come quickly. Yes. Hold that fast that thou hast. Yes. And no man take thy crown. So he says, Behold, I come quickly, and hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Because he said, Hold fast to this doctrine that I have. Don't let anyone come take your crown of righteousness because if they lead you astray, you're going to lose your salvation. That's what he's saying. Don't let anyone do it. But when you overcome, what's going to say? Him that overcometh, mm -hmm. will I make a pillar in that temple of my God. Yes. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. Yes. And the name of the city of my God, yes. which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. So he says, so look at verse 12. So him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, in the name of the city of my God, which is Jerusalem, which will come down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. See, Jesus is going to have a new name when he comes, because remember, he overcame, and now he has a new name. Now, when we overcome, we're also going to get a that's why the the, the, uh, the lesson was titled Seek the Lord to Obtain an Everlasting Name. Now we're going to also get a new name. Let's go to Revelation 2. Revelation 2, 1 verse, verse 17. Revelation 2, verse 17. Revelation 2, verse 17. Go ahead. Revelation 2, verse 17. Go ahead. He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, mm -hmm. will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Yes. <clears throat> and will give him a white stone. Yes. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth saving he that received it. See, so we all, yeah, we all gonna get that your own new personalized name. name. Yes, your own personalized name for the ones that overcome them. Now, you can be whatever that name is in a lick of fire burning. You don't know what they're going to be. But us, <laughs> he's saying that we're going to have a new name, right? So, like I said, so we overcome. So, he said that hidden manna. But well, what is that hidden manna? That's what I was just about to ask you. Glory to God. I want to hear that. Yeah, John 6, 51. <laughs> John 6, 51. One verse. John 6, 51. John 6, 51. John 6, 51. One verse. John 6, 51. When you get there, go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Mm. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hey, man. So that's that hidden man. That's that bread. That's what I thought. Yeah, friends. Sure yeah, that's it. That bread from heaven. Yeah, coming down from heaven. That right there, but that was him. There you go. Amen. Hey, man. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, so the spirit lined up. You got it. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Amen. Last one. Isaiah 56, 1 through 6. Because, you know, we understand as far as Israelites you know, overcome, we're going to get new names. But the strangers don't need to be left out of the world because they're also going to get a, name, a new name as well. And it's going to be an everlasting name. Isaiah 56, 1 through 6. 
Isaiah 56, 1 through 6. Isaiah 56, 1 through 6. And when you get there, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, keep your judgment and do justice, uh -huh. for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. So this is when he's bringing his salvation, his righteousness right here. This is when he's bringing it. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this, yes. and the son of man that layeth hold on it, mm -hmm. that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Yes. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak. Saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. See, we said, so, so don't let the stranger feel the Lord is separated from his, who were his people, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So he said, look, don't think that, you, hey, if you if you believe in me, you keep my Sabbath, <laughs> lay hold of my covenant. Keep reading, watch this. Neither, the, neither the eunuch say what? Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. And why you say you're a dry tree? Because they can't be fruitful because they don't have any, they can't multiply. Yeah, so he said, look, don't let them think that as well. But go ahead, verse 4. For thus saith the Lord uh -huh. unto the eunuchs, that keep my Sabbath. So he's even telling them, keep his Sabbaths. Uh -huh, for, uh -huh. And choose the things that please me. Yes. And take hold of my covenant. Uh -huh. Even unto them. Yes. I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Yes. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be Woo! cut off. See, that's going to be an everlasting name that's not going to be cut off. <laughs> So he's letting them know, like, hey, strangers, don't don't feel bad. Listen, like, look, you keep my commandments, you take hold of my covenant, you can also get that everlasting name. And that also, huh? I was going to say, how do you <laughs> I always go back to that. They how, say, how do you discount it? They say this are Israelites that were strangers. Gentiles, <laughs> Gentiles say the I say, what? <laughs> I'm like, yo, why was he? He said, but well, because he already said right here in verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that had joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath other, utterly separated me from his people. So so if you were an uh, Israelite with a Gentile state of mind or not, you're still an Israelite. So now he's letting them know, like, look, he's saying that these strangers who are non-Israelites, Israelites. you can take hold of the covenant and keep my Sabbaths. I will give you an everlasting name that will not be cut off. An everlasting name that will not be cut off. Go ahead. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Yes. To be his servant, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Amen, amen. But you see, he keeps mentioning my Sabbath, my Sabbath. Because Gentile, my Sabbath. Well, you know, the, the, the Sabbath was for the Jews. It ain't for the Gentiles. The strangers. But he keeps telling the strangers. That Sabbath, 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 hold my covenant, Sabbath. Why he keeps saying that? Because that's, excuse me, because that's something that he's, look, if you keep his Sabbath, you keep his covenant, believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you will get into the kingdom. And, and the Lord keeps saying that, that, that everlasting covenant. Yes. Everlasting covenant. <laughs> everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. When we, when we with the Lord, when Christ come back, we're going to still be keeping the Sabbath. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And you know what that? And you know what that's for, cousin? Right there, uh, John, John, uh, John ten sixteen, John ten sixteen. When Jesus made this declaration right here, he says, "And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there should be one fold and one shepherd." Right, those are dealing with Gentiles, exactly. So, right, he's gathering the outcasts of Israel, but he's also going to gather the strangers that take hold of his name. Yeah, John, yeah, John 10, yeah, John 10, 16, yeah, and Isaiah 56 uh, and 8. Yeah, exactly. So, hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.